tonight on the Georgia Roundtable, uh, we would like to interview Mike Bobo. However, he has denied our many requests for an interview to the Georgia Roundtable. So, uh, we, we can't talk to Mike. We can't get it straight from the horse's mouth. But had he accepted, had he accepted our invitation, our questions would have been as such. So, if you would ask Mike, compare your time with Rick to the day. What? The biggest difference from then to now. I want to know what, what you thought, Mike. You did it under Rick. What's the biggest difference? I, I asked him about Deshaun Watson. What really happened there? And what? Ask him, do you enjoy being the coordinator as much as when you started as the quarterback at UGA? Now, of course, Mike has declined my many offers to speak to the Bulldog Roundtable. Come on, crush it! Yeah! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Leaves us no choice but to speculate and investigate and try to navigate the twisted paths that Mike Bobo and UGA have crossed. Mike Bobo has no SEC titles. He lost three SEC championship games, two to Saban and one to Les Miles. He botched the recruitment of Deshaun Watson. Say what you will, in college, Watson was literally invincible. Didn't sign him. But Bobo was considered an excellent recruiter. But he didn't want Deshaun Watson. And that's crystal clear. Bobo didn't want him. So development, evaluation, injuries were always a problem. Especially with Bobo's top players, the five stars, Todd Gurley, was constantly missing games. Game management. Bobo's teams always are penalty prone. Inconsistent play from the skill positions. The top talent. But you never know. If Gurley was healthy, not suspended, or otherwise unavailable. So where do all of these questions lead us? Is Bobo a bad coach? Now, Bobo has been criticized for many corners, but was he a bad coach? Not if you ask his players. His players are always heaping praises on Bobo. They mostly love him. So, his public persona is rather limited. There isn't much information on Mike Bobo. His net worth is in the mid-seven figures. There it is, right here. Here it is, right here. Touchdown. Come on, look the safety off. Come on, Jay. Mike Bobo must be successful. His time at UGA under Rick was a mixed bag. A bag of trail mix. But the trail mix starts to make sense when you add a secret detail. Mike Bobo may have been more than fans realize. Bobo may have actually pulled off a huge caper. 
Nothing adds up with Mike Bobo. It's a long list. Get your calculators. You're going to need it. Someone in 2008 tracked Bobo's stats. He was a stat hound, and he tracked Bobo's stats. But he had a secret detail that nobody would believe. He tracked Vegas betting lines to every Bobo game with Georgia and Rick. And his conclusions are shocking. Well, one stat hound that managed to keep track of a team or a coach for a long period of time isn't really surprising. But we can't base an argument on that. However, it does present the premise that where there's smoke, there's fire. So I haven't been the first to say that Mike Bobo's career has been checkered. His success has been uh, limited. So Mike Bobo's career is an enigma. First of all, how did he survive as long as he did? But the only way we could come up to any kind of answer was to uh, bygones be bygones. What happened with Rick, we're just going to forget about it. We're going to forgive you for all of that. So now that the, uh, the season is officially over, Michigan has beaten Washington. <laughs> season was completely a waste of time in many ways. And Mike Bobo had a lot to do with that for me enjoying this season uh, personally, but I don't want that to happen next year. And so as we get into off-season programming, people that listen to uh, the Georgia uh, football, people that care about the program and know about the Georgia Roundtable, you know that there are three rules to be a Roundtable member. Number one, you have to love the Georgia Bulldogs. Number two, you have to support the Georgia Bulldogs. And number three, you have to defend Georgia whenever she is attacked. Chivalry is not dead. And Georgia has been attacked this past season with a frontal assault on what has become college football's best program. There's not a program like the University of Georgia. No one's doing it like we are. And yet, we still did not get the top trophy. And that's fine. That'll happen. But we believe this season had a little help. We're going to discuss every game from the standpoint of did Mike Bobo call this game to the best of the ability of the team? Or did he call the game to achieve a certain score? Let's just be blunt. We're just going to put it out there. People have said all year, Georgia seems to have an offense that works. They just do everything but score. Those kind of comments are all over the internet. So how can we just listen to that and not respond to it? If that's the case, there might be a reason. I think there is. And so, if I present to you the evidence that, uh, for example, uh, the first game of the season, when the over-under was achieved, then you go back and you study how the game went, and you have to figure it out for yourself if you believe that that was the best Georgia could have done. We're going to do it game by game. We're going to relive the season. But this time, instead of watching it like a football game, like we thought we were going to do, we're going to watch it as if, it was the Bobo method being put to the test. Just have a little fun with it. Think of it like a video game. You play back the season. Instead of watching it like expecting Georgia to do whatever they can to win a game, we can either put on our tinfoil hats or we can take them off. We're going to analyze each game. I think you'll enjoy this. Leave us a comment if you'd like to see more videos along this line. We're not here to, to really 
kind of hound on any particular coach or player, but we feel like there's a real problem. I think the evidence, as you watch these games, you'll see how each game broke down and we'll uh, point out uh, the points where it's pretty obvious that maybe Georgia isn't kicking it into high gear. And those kind of things, we'll just have to figure out the reason on our own. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and we want to do that, and we won't get to any of the breakdowns in this video because... I am busy, busy right now watching those first few games. So I'm really thinking of this as more or less trying to make sure that next year comes along and we don't have to ask those kind of questions because we really had a great team, we have a great program, uh, but if our suspicions are correct, a great program will certainly need to take some action. Okay. 